MMA Now, Power Move, Film On, TV Network. Connor, no belt on the line, but this still has a super fight feel. What does it mean to you to still have this type of support? What did I tell you? It's always a super fight when I'm in town, so. I'm living, this is the numbers and straps life. Take out a strap, it's still the numbers life, you know what I mean? So that's it, I'm here for a fight. Let's see, can this man fight? He's talked, he's talked a fair bit. If you've been following me or him, you know there's been subtle digs over the year, over the course of last year, maybe the last two years, where he's gonna say this and say that, but now all of a sudden he's a scared little brother of some sort, so. Um, let's, let's see what he has to say. I'm here for a fight and a check. And, and, and that's it, fuck, fuck the belt. When he was really to fight at 165, why give him that extra five pounds? Because he was complaining and moaning and then 155, no, I can't make 155, I can only make 160. Or I can only make, yeah, 160, okay, 160. Comes back a little bit later, oh no, 165. And I'm getting this phone call back and forth to this negotiation, I'm saying, tell the motherfucker it's 170 and, and enjoy your field. And that's it. Connor, you look strong at 170, how do you feel? And are you ever going back to 145? Oh, 100, man. The thing is, making that cut to 145, it's almost, people only see the build-up, the fight. People don't see after the fight. It's a process to get your body back right after an, a strenuous cut like that. This time, I'm waking up 168. I'm waking up underweight. So, after the fight, I won't have that process to get myself back right again. I'll be just me, normally. So, I can go back to 145, no problem. Who is that? Let me see some of these damn bums get up and fight and... Make some noise. I just hear crying, complaining, please, begging, all this shit. I don't see nothing appealing. You need something, you, they need to build themselves up right now. I'm sitting, I'm sitting pretty up here. They need to fight and make something, make some noise, make me stand up and say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take him in. That's, that's what I need to see, because right now I see nothing. I see a bunch of complainers, whiners. I'm not fighting him, I'm waiting, I'm sitting out and doing this. When have I ever waited? I've never waited once, even now. Title shot's gone, did I wait? No. I had I had the title shot after Portier, did I wait? No, I took the Siva fight. I, this is that's what champions do, that's what generates interest. I'm a hungry motherfucker that does not care who was in his way, you know. I just see a lot of crying, complaining babies right now in the game, so I'll take Nate out, I'll sit and I'll wait and see who the, see who pops out. Right now, a lot of bitches. I think people will be calling for you to have a welterweight title fight if you win this. Yeah, that's that's there. I mean, why not? That's that's probably leading option. I mean, how the Sanyas is an absolute bomb. I swear to. God. I mean, and, and he's still complaining. How can you pull out a fight with a Bruce Hunt and still talking all this shit? And his team is talking all this shit. Man up and fight. Come on, do you know what I mean? Is there so I don't know what to say there, to this is, guy. Is there any disappointment on your end that you don't get to no. chase history this you know, Saturday? I'm not. Look at this, this is always history, every damn time. The gates keep rising, the pay-per-views keep rising, the attendance keep, you know what I mean? Everything just keeps on rising, so it's always history making here when I step in, in, inside that octagon, so. Whether there's another belt, this, really there is. There's, I have two belts at home, I have the interim, I have the unified, and I have the two other uh, world titles, the lightweight and featherweight that I won in the previous organization. So there's belts everywhere on me. So I'll keep continuing showing up. Like I said, I'm seriously considering making my own damn belt. If you're going to have and people, can, and then I'll and then I'll I'll make my own belt, and then I'll decide what weight the fight is at. Why not? Why not? Because who will? Who cares about the belts? It's it's a money fight. You know what I mean? This is the money fight that everyone wants. They should be chasing for it, trying to knock everyone out of their way to get to it. Not crying and complaining and saying I'm going to wait until Uncle Dana picks up the phone call. And, Please, you know what I mean? All that shit. Connor, a lot of people said that Robbie Lawler is a different animal. He's obviously a big guy. What do you think about Robbie Lawler? Yeah, I, like, I like Robbie. I, I, I won't say a bad word about Robbie. He fights with his heart. He's been around the game so, so long. But if he fought, I would beat Robbie. I, I'm too fast for him. I'm too, you know, the, the size difference is not a, anything. I've stood beside him. I've seen him, you know. But I do like Robbie. I respect him as a champion, as a man that can drifted off, came back, stayed on it, and, and rose up and became the welterweight champion, you know, so. We'll uh, see how that goes. I mean, that's, that, that is an appealing one um, for me, the, the welterweight. All the belts, you know, we'll see. You're talking about, res you're talking about respect uh, here in regards to Lawler. You also talked in respect to Diaz, and it sounds like you do have a good <laughs> amount of respect for him. Would you say this is the opponent that you've respected the most in your UFC run? Look, I have respect for all of them, but, you know, I just respect that he showed up. That's that's it, really. You know, and I respect Nick and Nate, and you know, they, I've always liked them. I've always enjoyed the way they show up and the way they fight. And all, you know, I sense a different Nate. I think it's clear as day. He's not himself. You know what I mean? He's timid. His voice is quivering. It's a different Nate there. But I still have respect for him. But but again, ring the bell. 
I'm coming out fast and I'm coming out spinning and, that, and that's it, his head is coming off, it's as simple as that. Connor, once that you lost your mind to the sport, you were Vincent Van Gogh, can you explain what you meant by that? Um, yeah, you know, when you work so, so hard and you, you dive so deep, and, and, and when I'm around normal society, I can't function around normal society. I talk about normal things because I'm just off somewhere else. So that, that is what I mean. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm just deep in my crap and there's no going back. And I'm happy with that. I chose to do that. A lot of people, they might find something they're passionate about and not go full in, not fully commit. Go to normal life and they'll never really achieve anything with their passion. They'll end up doing something that they don't like to do. And so I have gone insane and deep into my craft. How long can you keep doing this with that in mind, with the strain and the expectations and the responsibility? How long can you keep doing this? There's no strain, man. What strain? I'm chilling. I'm, I'm, I'm living good. I am living good. I'm, I'm eating better. I'm dressing better. Man, I feel damn good. There's no prep. This is just another day for me. I can go. I'm only 27. 27 years of age at the very, very top with no one even close. You talk about obsession, is there any worry on your end that you burn out at some point? And how do you keep that passion so high? Because I you train are intelligent, I, I train intelligent, I look to walk different ways and I listen to myself, you know. When I do need to take a step back, I'll take, take a step back, but right now I don't need to take a step back. I'm happy, I'm comfortable, I'm energized. I don't you talk about these, these higher weights being kind of stuck in the mud. How, how slow are these guys compared to the guys you find? I think it's going to be really, really evident on Saturday night. I think the speed did, difference is going to be really really evident it's, you're going to see you you'll see for yourself what i mean by stuck in the mood when me and they fight Connor john jones coming back uh, next month going to fight dan cormier a lot of people say he's the best pound for pound fighter in the world he's not how he's do you not. how do you rank the, the, the fighters um i'm number one two three four five six seven eight nine and maybe john and mighty mouse is ten that's where i feel Last week's press conference was interesting. It seemed like you said everything. Was he intimidated? You got that feeling? It seemed like he had it. He didn't yeah, say he's had this little. He's, I mean, you've been covering the game a long time. He's had this swagger about him. He's been giving. He's gonna do this. Gonna do that. He don't know. He sat there and quivered. That's what he's doing. And, and looked at Nick every two seconds. So he should have. He should have. He shouldn't have said anything. If he hadn't said anything. I wouldn't even pick up the phone call. He tried to call me out. Should I do this and that. Now I came hunting for him. He's trying to say people are afraid to fight him. I hunted him down, stalked him, got him. And now I have him trapped on Saturday night. Do you Mystic, fear anybody? Give me a Mystic Mac uh, prediction for the, uh, for the fight Saturday. You know, I'd love to see it play out a little bit longer so I can show the fans the, the, the improvement. I didn't get to show true, the true improvement that I have in my game um, in that last fight because it was over so quick. But just can't see him taking the shots. It's a, he's going to feel a new level of uh, precision and a new level of power and a new level of unorthodox fighting that he's never experienced in his life. I hope he can last into the, into the end, end, of, end, end, of the, end of the first, but um, I just um, I, don't, I don't really I don't really see. It. I hope I hope so. I hope he can take it. <laughs> Do you fear anybody? No. No. If you're, if you're willing to fight me, we can fight. No problem. Come and try me, anyone. What's the businessman Conor McGregor like now? Because now you, you transcended that whole thing and now you got cars, houses, whatever. What's kind of the businessman Conor McGregor? I'm just continuing being smart, making smart decisions, aligning myself with brands and companies that I feel represent me and that I have a passion in also. I won't just jump in, in front of anything if it doesn't suit me, if it doesn't fit, and I won't engage in it. But I'm being intelligent and growing in all aspects of the game. Like the businessmen in politics sometimes? Did you see last weekend in the Irish general election? I, 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 got a great la I got a great laugh out of it. Someone voted for me in the, in, or someone tried to put my name as a president. I mean, you know, I would love to do something to help my people, but I wouldn't go in as a, you know, as a publicity type thing. I wouldn't be interested in that. It doesn't, and I think a lot of that, some people have done that. You know, that, sh that you know, man, Ken or whatever his name is, he, he went in. If you're not going to go in and make a difference, if you can't truly help the people, then I would, you know, they might do it. So, who knows? That's a, that's a, that's down the line. Maybe I don't know. A lot of champions in the past, Connor, uh, didn't go up and wait, didn't go down and wait to fight other champions, didn't fight other, you know, big fights. Why is it important for you, and why do you think those guys didn't do that? I don't know. I mean, people, people, Fabrizio pulled down and threw cards down the water. John pulled down and threw cards down the water. Um, nobody was willing to step up or down. I can't tell. I can't answer that. You play it safe. 
If you don't take risks, you won't go all the way. So I, I, I get in, I take risks, um, and that's why I go all the way. Connor, Steve Poland says the best way to pilot is to do Steve Collins is an absolute legend. I mean, what, a, what a warrior, the Celtic warrior. Uh, I, I was speaking to him before I came here. He dropped into the camp to me. Uh, I trained with his brother Pascal. He's a phenomenal boxing coach. Got a great stable of pros. To hear something like that, I'm very, uh, very flattered. I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, flattered. And I continue to get better. I continue to show my countrymen different ways to fight. You know, before me, there was there was boxing, there was a certain set of movements. But now people are opening up their mind, and I'm very, very proud of that. And, uh, that's, that's a great honor and a great right to do that. Right? Right. Am I the greatest fighter? I think, I mean, I think so. I, I believe so, and I'm only getting better. I'm only 27. Connor, I know you like to make bold claims, but realistically, is 170 the highest we could ever see you fight? Who knows? I could be like a block at once, you know? As I... As I keep growing and keep eating and keep training, my body could change as I get older, you know. Um, I could become that solid block at 170, and at that block 170, I'd happily go to 185. It'd be like going 145 to 155, so um, I have no problem doing that. I'd, I'd go in and go up, I need no problem. Connor, how much of this fight is just you pulling your body out of 170 to take the welterweight step? Just eating and training, that's it. Just trying to. Just trying to relax, eat, train, enjoy, enjoy it the way it's supposed to be, you know. Weight cutting is a weird one. Um, it's weird the way it even became what it is. Um, but for me, 170 is just relax. Eat. But it, it, seemed like, up. it seemed like you wanted to fight made of this. Of well, this it's a division. It's a division. You don't want to fight 155. You want to fight 60. Then you want 165. Let's just fight 170. You fought there. You fought many guys. You fought... Uh, Rory, you fought some top guys of that way. Let's do it in a division. Let's put another division on notice. Are you, is this meaning that if this goes well, uh, at 200 you'll uh, go for the Baltimore game? Why not? I mean, I could. I certainly could. Uh, I mean, what's the story with the signers? I would have liked them. Boom, boom, boom. 45, 55, 70. 45, 70, 55 is... I don't know, we'll have to see, but I'm up for it. I'm up Connor, I'll make that decision now. Connor, the game signs questions, with guys. the left hand, the animal balloons with the right. Did you just make that up off the cuff? That yeah. was brilliant. No, I mean, he has this kind of demeanor about him, and then he ain't what he portrays. So that's what I was getting with that. That's Connor, what is your interest in, in Hollywood? I know you said that's kind of secondary. People said it was a distraction for somebody like Ronda. Is that really secondary to you? Is the fight game always going to be most important? <laughs> I think so. I, I mean, I, I don't have a deep root passion for, for show business or that kind of thing. But as something else dies down, as one thing dies down, another thing rises. Who knows? Now, there was a time back when I was obsessed with football. You know what I mean? That was many, many years ago. Then, then the fight business for me. Now, now it's the fight business. Who knows it down the line? Show business, politics. I don't know. I'm just living my life and uh, training and fighting and collecting. Connor, at 145, your advantages were your speed, I guess, and your power and your size more specifically. As you move, move up, those presumably diminish. So how do you deal with that? Um, yeah, preparation for each, each preparation for a 45 contest and a 55 contest or a 70 contest is different. The build-up is different. There's a lot more focus on the weight, but um, my speed will be, will be there. My power certainly will be there. Um, but again, questions are beautiful. Tune in Saturday night and you will have your answer. You have any kind of dollars on weight right now? I'm underweight, so yeah, I wake up underweight, have two breakfasts, and then I'm on weight. So I'm very, very, very happy. Connor, that day, that day in the Los Angeles uh, conference when you, you said those things about the train, the chapel, you wearing the shirt, that's something you came up with or you had planned? I had a suit picked for the conference, was going shopping. And then I went into that Rodeo Drive. It's a great place, that Rodeo Drive. Treats you very well. And when you roll in there with some money, they, they are the nicest, friendliest people you've ever met in your life. I wonder what it's like if you don't have money rolling in there. But I went there shopping with my friend who I had over with me training. Saw that shirt. It reminded me of the El Chapo, the famous thing. And I just rolled with it. It was literally the day before, the, day before the press conference. So we just had some fun with it. That's, that's what life is about, have fun, you know what I mean? So that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. How's the Spanish doing? Huh? How's your Spanish doing? Not, not very good, but uh, I'll, I'll learn for you. You keep asking me. You've asked me a few times, right? <laughs> Next time, I'll, I'll have a little bit of Spanish for you. Yeah? 
Thanks, guys. See everybody tomorrow. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Cheers. Appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thanks, All right, let's find